Hey guys, my name is Bjergsen from Team Solo Mid, and this is my basic champion's guide to Diana. For a solo queue, I think Diana is best picked if they have a lot of squishies, because she can easily just burn down the backline. If you land a queue, you can pretty much one shot any carry if you get a couple of auto attacks on them. She also is really good if they have weak split pushing champions, so you can just split push the entire game, and if anyone comes up, you can instantly beat them 1v1 or even 1v2. But Diana is really solid overall in solo queue, and it's really up to player skill how good she'll be. I think she's a really high skill kept champion. Diana's early laning is obviously not very good, but if you have an easy matchup and they have a weak early game jungler, you can definitely walk up and push instantly. But generally, I recommend just pulling back and once you have about 500 or 600 gold, you can recall TP back in lane and get a bunch of pots and wards. It's really going to help you out with the early laning phase, but overall, Diana does have a pretty weak laning phase and in 1v1, you're going to be weaker most of the time since you do have teleport. So make sure you don't fight unless you have an item or health advantage. For later on the lane where you get around like level 9, level 7, even your level 6 spikes, you can look for trades and you can even look for roams. Diana becomes really strong once you get some items. The most optimal way for Diana to start a team fight is either walking from the back on a flank or being able to use your teleport to flank on their carries. Diana doesn't really do that well on a full frontal fight 5v5. She really wants to come from the side or from the back and go onto one of the carries and do damage and be a distraction using her Zanya. So on Diana, either if you don't have the optimal team fight, I recommend not going for a team fight unless you get some sort of hard engage from someone else. Or otherwise, you just want to be split pushing and gaining pressure on the sideline. Once you get some cooldown reduction in lane, a good tip you can do for trade is to queue the backline minions and start walking back. And as they're walking up to the backline minions, you can jump on that minion and then you can get an easy trade because your queue is going to come back up and it really lets you close that range and get a trade. People often walk up to the creeps even if you have your queue buff on them and it lets you get the reset on your ulti and get an easy trade essentially. Another good tip for Diana is that she does clear jungle camps really easily and without losing pretty much any health. So when you get level 6, level 7, you can easily queue over to the raptor camp and just take them and lose very very little health using your shield so just keep that in mind especially if you're getting pressured in lane or if you're just push the enemy laner out and you want to counter jungle them diana farms really really fast for runes on diana most of the time i run magic pen reds hp scaling yellows flat mr blues and ap quents uh you can switch out the flat mr blues for cdr scaling and the hp scaling yellows for flat armor depending on the matchups but Really, the, you need some sort of early tankiness in the lane because it helps out since Diana has melee, she is going to take a lot of punishment, but overall just getting as much damage as possible. I do want to address the attack speed reg, which is something that people do, but when you get the Nash's Tooth, having the attack speed reds is not going to make a big difference and the magic pen is going to pay a lot better, so I definitely prefer magic pen reds over attack speed. For Diana, I run 21-9-0. Most notably is the spell weaving and offense because you do get a lot of basic attacks with Diana when you build the Nash's Tooth, so it's going to make a pretty big difference later in the game. And of course, 9 defense for the early laning. For summoners on Diana, I always go flash TP. Uh, Diana has really rough early laning between 1 and 6, but TP allows you to go Doran's ring. And then once you get pushed out of lane, you can back by another Doran's or other items and TP back in a lane. It just really make sure you stay even on farm. And later in the game, it helps a lot. With Diana, you don't always want to just straight up team fight uh, until you get some items. And TP allows you to just be split pushing and you can always join the fight to clean up or get a really good flank using TP. It really solves a lot of Diana's problems. For Diana's early skill order, you can start either Q or W. W mainly for melee matchups, Q for ranged, and then you want to be going uh, Q, W, Q, W. You don't want to take E until level 8. And for maxing, you do max Q, then W, then E, of course. Just get the damage and the wave clear from Q, and then the shield from W is going to make a big difference in team fights later in the game. For the item build, since I have TP, I always start Doran's Ring, because you can always back and TP back in the lane with more items. After 1-2 to two Dorans, I instantly go for the Nash's Tooth, because it was changed, giving more AP, it makes it a lot better of an item on Diana, and combined with the TP, it's going to make you a really strong slip pusher to take down towers. After the Nash's Tooth, I either go Abyssal or Zhonya's, combined with the Sorcerer's Shoes. Abyssal if they have a lot of physical damage and you need to active. Uh, Abyssal if they have a lot of magic damage, obviously. And after that, you generally want to get Zhonya's even if you have Abyssal. Then you want to stack up on big AP items like Deathcap, Void Staff, um, or even Lich Bane. Thanks for watching this guide for Diana. You can check out more content at lawclass.com.